All right, first we're gonna set up on the Canon side of things. I'm gonna highlight the patient name. It should automatically pick the program for you. If you want to change that at all, of course, you will go to the edit exam and click the down arrow to find your stitch page here. And whatever you would like to change it to, you can add. If you're going to do a lateral, you can add that in. And then you're going to click Start Exam. You should see a box that will tell you how many images you're going, the computer is expecting. We, what we'll have you do is go ahead and start with a three image stitch. If you only use the two first two images, that's fine, then you can stitch after that. If you do need the third one, it will be there and ready for you. For the room setup, uh, for this particular patient, I'm going to stitch with my detector in the lengthwise position. It is possible to do it either way, lengthwise or crosswise. So if you have a wider patient and you're trying to include ribs, crosswise might be the way to do that. The next uh, important step is the, are the BBs. BBs need to be between four and five centi uh, millimeters wide to show up on the Canon system. And what we're going to do is put the BBs right in the middle of the area we want to cover. The goal is to have the BBs in both pictures. The BBs are what the computer will look for to stitch the image together. So if you, you need to kind of size up your patient and how much area you're covering. And then you want to kind of guess where the middle's going to be, and that's where the BBs are going to go uh, for this, our purposes here. And you want to make sure you're putting these on the patient's skin, not on the gown, because the gown can move in between pictures, and it will uh, change the position of your BBs. So for our uh, somewhat stenic patient here, we're going to put them either side of the spine here. We're going to do this one PA, which is your normal protocol here. Next step is to set up the tube. Stitches are always done at 72 inches. What I'm going to do now is set up so the middle of my area is at the level of the BBs. Once I've determined that height, I'm going to leave my tube there. I'm not going to adjust the height at this point. I am only going to angle to make sure I'm covering the area that I need to cover. So for this patient, I'm going to angle up until I make sure I have the base of the skull. And then I'm going to line up my bucky so the two match. And now I'm ready for my first picture. As you can see, the BBs have shown up in the bottom of this first picture. And we're ready for the second picture. Now what I'm going to do is go back to my zero position here. And again, I don't adjust the height but I do just adjust the angle so that now my BBs are in the top of the image and just making sure that I've got far enough to the bottom to cover the area I need. Again, I line up to the center point and I'm ready for my next picture. At this point, I can determine that I've covered enough anatomy. I do not need to take the third image. But what I do need to do is go back to my first image and just double check the cropping. When uh, doing this particular patient, the cropping is not going to work well because of all the metal in the image. So I just need to fix that before we go any further. All right, now I've got my cropping where I want 
I'm just going to click stitch here. The program opens the stitch page, stitches my images. I did not get any error messages, so I'm going to click the OK button in the lower right. And it shows me my final stitch image. At this point, I can do any and all editing that I do on uh, normal uh, images. I can do the ROI. I can adjust the cropping if I need to, masking if I need to. If I need to check to see if it's stitched correctly, I can magnify it just to double check that, yes, my BBs do overlap. Remember that you do want to reset that size before you send it to PAX. Make sure everything is labeled the way you want. And then when you're finished, click End Exam to send it to PAX. Just a quick note here. Also, notice that at the top here, I'm getting a flashing red battery and an exclamation point over here. If I click on that, it's going to tell me that my detector battery is weakening and that now is the time to change the detector. It's always best to wait for this, the system to tell you to change batteries, so now is a good time to do that.